18-year-old Baron Trump is taking on the unofficial role, but it's an important one, as podcast advisor to his father, Donald Trump. Barron introduced his 78-year-old father to podcasts in order to speak to all those Gen Z voters. I remember this one, Theo Vaughn, such a classic. We will see Trump sit down with Rogan. Now, of course, on the other side, Trump's not the only candidate taking to the podcasts. Kamala has another softball interview with podcast host Brene Brown today, and of course, she did call her daddy. Um, and she'll also be on stage tonight with Beyonce, Kamala Harris in Houston, which is Beyonce's hometown. Remember, Beyonce was rumored to be at the DNC, never showed up. They had to go to her. Hits and misses, and it starts right now. And let's bring in the all-star panel, writer over at The Blaze and host of the Unauthorized Opinions podcast, Andrew Chapados, with us. His debut on Hits and Misses, so good to see him. Author of Supermoms Activated, Jacqueline Toberoff, and our friend of the program, host of The Joe Pegg Show, Joe Peggs. Guys, welcome in. Hi. Thank you for having us. Joe Rogan, Donald Trump, the podcast of all podcasts. Potentially, you know, we'll see what happens. There's a rumor out there that Kamala Harris canceled due to conflicting schedules, but she's going to sit down with Brene Brown. Um, podcaster Andrew, your debut. I'm going to give you the first uh, hit at this. What do you think of um, these podcasts, the dueling podcasts here, and if it really was a scheduling conflict? I love that Rogan extended the invitation, that's for sure. Yeah, I was thinking this whole time that they should have made sure Kamala went on Rogan first before Trump, because I knew she would pull out as soon as there was going to be some sort of competition uh, involved in who's going to go on Rogan or not, because she's going to look bad no matter who she goes on, as long as it's not a softball interview. As far as Trump going on all these other interview uh, podcasts, I think it's a great move. We've seen him on Theo Vaughn. We've seen him on the Nelk Boys podcast. This is a great way to reach young men that might not be politically aware of the actual reasons to vote for Trump, accomplishments he's done. And it sort of humanizes him the way he can talk about just random things like like MMA or what's going <laughs> on in yeah. Gen Z culture at the moment. But Kamala, she goes on these podcasts. She can't answer the most simple questions. They could ask her if she prefers Coke or Pepsi. And she'd be like, well, you know, the thing about Coke is, is all Americans need to get together and decide <laughs> what the border is doing. And like she can't answer a question that's so straightforward that's meant to make her look good. So no matter where she goes, it's going to be bad, I think. It's going to be bad. Brene Brown, I mean, people may not be plugged into her. Jacqueline, do you, do you want to uh, update our audience on Brene Brown and what kind of, you know, psycho babble we may hear from this? I mean, look, it, this, this, at this point, there are very few undecided voters, right? So Kamala Harris just looks good going on these shows because she's not recruiting any Republicans. And the Democrat base... They applaud her. They think it's strength that she's going on these shows. Mm. So I really don't see it as a loss for her, to be honest. Uh, Joe, let me get you in this. Mel Gibson is backing Donald Trump in the upcoming election. He's caught on this clip with TMZ. I, I love it because the meme of him, Braveheart, of like voting for Donald Trump versus voting in 2020 versus now is just iconic imagery. What do you make of all this, plus the podcast, plus the momentum, plus, I don't know, did you get McDonald's French fries this week? I, you know, all of this is, is so historic. I, I, I I wish I had gotten some French fries. I'm more of a low carb guy. But um, when I watch when I watch the whole Joe Rogan thing to begin with, the biggest podcast on the planet, it's probably going to break the internet when Trump does it. If you're invited to do that and you want to be the president of the United States, you do it. I don't care what your schedule says. You cancel Brene Brown. I've never heard of that person before. <laughs> you cancel I'm your daddy or who's your daddy or call me daddy, whatever the whatever the heck that is. You, you go on that podcast, you sit there and you have a conversation like a real person. To, to Jackie's point, no, they're, she's not going to get any Republicans to come and vote for her. But there are a lot of undecideds. There are a lot of people in the middle that you can still grab. I think people were sitting on the fence before that, that sham of a CNN town hall the other day. And a lot of them fell off the fence towards Trump because of how badly she did. And as far as Mel Gibson, what I like about Mel, Mel Gibson is he just doesn't care. He's going to say what he thinks. He's not afraid to have people hear him say it and see him say it. He'll stand behind it. So I, I think this is a catastrophic failure by Kamala Harris's campaign to not have her go on the largest podcast. And I didn't think Mel was going to vote for her anyway, to be honest. 
Yeah, and also um, Beyonce tonight. I mean, this is sort of pathetic in its own right. I mentioned how she, you know, there was this. I was at the DNC, and they were like, "Beyonce's coming," and I was kind of just like trolling the press. I was like, "I see yeah, Beyonce." We all that. I see Beyonce, and they were like, "What?" And I knew she wasn't there. But like, they go to Houston, they talk abortion, they have Bruce Springsteen, and Willie Nelson's with them tonight too. We lost Willie Andrew, another one on the left. I know. Didn't they try this before Beyonce and Jay-Z had a concert for Hillary Clinton, I think, in 2016? And it was a spectacular failure. Failure. Listen, all these things are so ridiculous. Like, she goes on the Call Her Daddy podcast to talk about, like, sex. And she goes on Charlemagne the God and can't talk about anything. Like, when is she going to actually say something? That's what we're all waiting for. For Kamal to be on a show or a podcast and be able to articulate something of merit. It's not going to happen. I'd rather watch pizza reviews if you put, you know, person running for president versus Ooh. pizza review. Yeah. I'm going with pizza review because Kamal Harris couldn't even name what was on the pizza she was eating. That's how bad her answers have been. I don't think Beyonce is going to move the needle at all for her. Taylor Swift didn't move the needle at all. I think it's just, you know, desperate ploy to look cool before the election. Yeah. And, you know, this town hall was a failure. We just want to, you know, remind people of one of the <laughs> highlights um, of her, you know, her epic fail. Let's play this. done but there's more to do anderson and and i'm pointing out <laughs> things that need to be done that haven't been done but need to be done maybe the worst answer in history joe pags <laughs> uh, you listen when you're trying to get things done you should really do them and when you do them they will get done but not enough has gotten done yet we're gonna get it done we will do it when it's done i did a video on this for all the social media platforms and it went crazy people literally just see nothing but word salad then you've got like her her running mate calling Donald Trump word salad. Bianca, what is the deal? Does the left do the horrible campaigning then blame <laughs> Trump for it? She literally stood there yesterday and said, Donald Trump is exhausted. I know. <laughs> His staff told me. As the guy did like seven rallies in three hours or something, and he's dishing out the McDonald's french fries. He's on a plane to go see Rogan. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know who's running the campaign. It's almost like they want to lose. I don't believe that, but it's if, if I were a dumb guy that didn't pay attention, steps. I'd think, oh, that side doesn't want to win. They can't possibly. The only answer that <laughs> was maybe worse than that. Can you tell us something that you that uh, some mistake you've made that you've learned from? Well, I try to learn about issues, and it would have been a mistake not to know about the issues. What? That I don't is know what answer. she's talking about. I really you, don't. I do this for a living, yes. and she makes my job easy. But I'd almost rather she said something I can comment on. I can't even say I don't like what she said because this. She doesn't say anything. And we've all gotten that answer. I mean, high school jobs are like, tell us the worst quality about yourself. I mean, it's a layup. You tell what your kids what to, uh, to ask. And now we're yes. leading into the weekend. MSG, it's going to be a huge weekend. But I do want to play a clip between Charlemagne and Anderson because it got a little testy, Jacqueline. Charlemagne was also sort of a layup for her, which really didn't move the needle either. We, we talked about this yeah. every single This is what I, I, I don't think I've been talking talk about, about this enough. every every night. I don't think y'all have enough conversations about it. I feel like I heard more on this network about is Kamala Harris black than I do about, you know, yeah. Donald Trump being a fascist. Well, am, I, am I wrong, I, I, Angela? I, I, honestly, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. Ooh, Ooh. I like that. Ooh, uh, a little spicy there, Jacqueline. But, you know, they do like to bring out Hillary Clinton like Caitlin Collins last night. So Charlemagne's not wrong about the legacy media. He's not wrong about how uh, much they propped up her. But, you know, his podcast, he didn't go that hard on her either. I predict once Trump wins, there's going to be a reckoning on the left. It's going to be between the moderate Democrats, which are more like Republicans, and this other uber left wing. It's just not compatible. So once Trump wins, I think the left is going to rearrange. Um, real quick, Andrew, you also read about sports over at the Blaze, and Donald Trump was at the Steelers game, which was sort of magical in its own moment. He had the Steelers, uh, former players out there. What was your read on the sort of the chance of USA? They still tried to say that people were booing him, of course. <laughs> Well, it co goes along with the claim that he was too tired, right? He goes from McDonald's to a rally to the Steelers game and then back on a plane later that night. I think the NFL crowds are always going to love him. The UFC crowds love him. And what's not to love, he is absolutely hilarious. I mean, that's the everybody who's saying how much Americana it was watching him pour fries in. We've got to give them more fries. And I, I think that's images <laughs> that will actually last forever. Him in the window waving kind of like Dave from Wendy's. Yes. And I, I think that stuff is going to continue to happen if he becomes president again. The NFL crowds will always love him. But go Broncos, by the way.
Ah, they, I went to my first Broncos game a few weeks ago. Was pre- I loved the um, skydivers. That was pretty awesome. We'll talk about more uh, when you guys come back next week. I hope Andrew Chapatos, Jacqueline Toberoff, Joe Peggs, check them out. Follow them on social. Hits and misses. Thank you all. Thanks, Bianca. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. More Newsline and more 